Roxbury, Montpelier Roxbury Board of School Directors. Um, I have a quorum so we can start. Uh, first order of business is public comment. Um, uh, we are going to have a presentation. We're going to have comment after the or Q and A after the presentation. It's not on the agenda, but you can yeah. adjust the agenda for that. Yeah, um, we can. Uh, let's adjust the agenda to put uh, any Q and A after the discussion. If anyone has any questions, to make sure people get all the information they need. Um, so uh, let's open it up to public comment. Again, public comment is for. Uh, for the board to listen and take information. Um, it can be on anything, but obviously this is an informational meeting for the budget. So, um, uh, yeah, but any topic is, is likely. And again, we don't respond in real time, but it's very important to our uh, process. And um, uh, we, we definitely consider uh, and um, value the input of, of all public comment that's given. Uh, anyone in the room want to make public comment? Nope. Uh, anyone online, if you could either do the raise hand function or um, otherwise signal with a physical wave of the hand if you don't know the raise hand function, but the raise hand function should be down at the bottom of your screen. Sometimes it's reaction, sometimes it's its own little thing. All right, no public comment. Um, so presentation, and again, we'll have a little time for Q and A after the uh, after the the presentation. Christina, you want to come on up to to the table? All my other stuff I was doing before. Okay. Oops, sorry. So here is the um, proposed second draft of our budget. Uh, this presentation looks very familiar for the board for the beginning of the board, the budget process way back in November. Um, it looks very similar to that, but does have some changes. Beginning, I'll kind of fly through these a little bit, just our district information um, for each of the four school buildings. We have 290 employees and 161 of those are teachers. Here's our, just our demographics by school building for everybody if they're interested. Um, and then district drivers. We have our budget themes, which is to support our theory of growth, which I'll talk about in a minute while still being sensitive to tax implications for our community. There are several state factors, as we all know, influencing our budget this year. Act 127 is the new pupil waiting implications. Uh, Montpelier Roxbury would have to significantly increase our tax capacity in order to have similar services under Act 127. We have an anticipated dollar yield. I don't believe it's been voted specifically yet, um, but it's anticipated to be $9,846 for a dollar yield um, and the common level of appraisal for both towns have decreased um, and the health rate increase, health rates increased are 16.4%. These are all statewide factors that Montpelier Roxbury has very little to do with. Um, and then local factors, we have a slightly decreasing student enrollment and we have both sal salary increases for both our teachers and our instructional assistants going into the FY25 budget. The board's focus is to academic achievement for all students, a community of safety, inclusion, and belonging for every member of our community and commitment to open communication with the community. This is the theory of growth for our district. We wanna build limitless futures for every learner. That, what that means is upon graduation, every learner has the skills and confidence to make any choice they want to when they leave our district. And inside, we believe that if we have collective responsibility and collaborative practices amongst the adults, we formalize our essential learning so that we're guaranteeing a curriculum. We have timely system to enrich, intervene, and remediate when kids aren't getting it the first time. And there's high quality instruction in every classroom that we will be able to build limitless futures for every learner. 
Um, just so if people are really interested in diving into those ideas more, there are several uh, pieces on our website that you can click on to. So this page is just clickable links as to where you can find assessment items and our curricular items and how we're defining multi-tiered system of support, what the professional learning looks like for high quality instruction. All of this work is um, ongoing and we have lots of information on our website. So that's where people can find that information. This year's major budget drivers our salaries is 52.5% of the expenses in our budget. The benefits are 22.3% of expenses in the budget. Of course, adding that up, we get around 74, 75% of our budget is salaries and benefits alone. The statewide healthcare cost is 16.4 increase from FY24. We have no control over that increase. It is a statewide piece. That means there are insurance increases alone from FY24 to FY25 is an increase of about $400,000. So I said before, Act 127 provided new pupil weights um, that requires us to either cut programming or significantly increase to our tax capacity. And with Act 850, which is connected to 127, which came down in beginning of February, <laughs> um, that amended 127 to eliminate the original 5% cap in the law, which further increased our tax burden. From the failed vote, the board received tons of feedback. I, in one weekend, I believe we received about 250 emails all in one. <laughs> Uh, the first that thing that we heard was to preserve, preserve programs and educational opportunities for students. Um, that was inclusive of social emotional supports. We heard that uh, our public wants to preserve enrichment opportunities, preserve and improve transportation options, and preserve our fund balance for unexpected rainy expenses and reduce the projected tax rate considerably. So th that was the main feedback that our community gave us. And a budget. So here's just a reference for glossary of terms. It's really hard to explain the budget without using some of these terms. So if people want that right next to them, um, I would bookmark that page or pull this PowerPoint up so you can see it as we're talking. Christina, would you like to take over? Um, so in this budget we vote, um, we were directed to cut roughly 1.5 one and a half million dollars. And so what that looks like is a $30 million budget. Um, and that represents a, a little over 6% increase from the current budget. Our, and as Libby said, um, they have announced the dollar yield, which is at 9,846. We were using a $10,000 figure earlier in the budget process. So that number has changed. And so that changes it good or bad. Um, if the yield goes up, it helps the budget. It helps our um, tax rate with the calculation. So we are anticipating um, the 10 cents. That was the revision to Act 127. So with the new budget, we're looking at a dollar 29 in Montpelier and a dollar 37 in Roxbury. The next slide will show you what that does to a $200,000 house, um, $300,000 and $400,000 in both towns. And this is, the next slide is the current non-residential tax rate. There is some discussion around this um, rate at the state house, so we'll see if this changes. And do you, want, do you want me to? So some of the changes from the first vote of how we got the approximate $1.5 million decrease from the vote that failed. Uh, the board voted to bus the elementary age students who live in Roxbury to Union Elementary School starting next school year. That's a savings of, a pro of just over $1 million. Um, that equals 5.9 FTE of teachers, 1.0 administration, meaning principal, 1.0 um, instructional assistant, 1.0 AFSME, which is an uh, administrative assistant, 
Supplies and, pro and professional services would be decreased by about 78,000 and then operations, which includes facilities and that kind of thing would be around 125,000. That number is not exact. It's a roundabout because we're not exactly sure how much the building use will be and so how much we need facilities over there. We also are decreasing by uh, 1.0 in the MREA for a literacy coach position that is currently unfilled for a savings of approximately $110,000. One change from what the board looked at before in this budget is that after a lot of deliberation from the leadership team, it was decided you before there was a 1.0 social work position on this slide. Um, and after a lot of deliberation, the leadership team decided that we'd still have too many needs that we needed that position. And so it was going to be an MHS reduction in social work. So MHS said, I can find that reduction of the same cost in a different way. And if I can do it, if I can do it even, then I'd like, we'd like to keep that social work position. Um, so there, we're doing that by eliminating just the MHS permanent sub. We're keeping the UES and, uh, and uh, Main Street Middle School permanent subs, but just the, main, the Montpelier High School permanent sub, and then reducing some other areas in the MHS budget by about $40,000. So then that keeps the, the social work position here at MHS for the Thrive program. We're decreasing by 1.5 FTE from the instructional assistants, which are our library assistants. Christina combed through who's using health insurance and who has budgeted for health insurance and found a savings of approximately $50,000. We're saving in communication technology to a savings of about $18,000. We're um, once again, not buying a certain athletic equipment um, for $30,000 and having a facilities reduction of about $64,000 to get approximately 1.5. So just with um, students moving from Roxbury over to UES, here are the class sizes that will be for using our current enrollment. Um, so there were still well below our, our max average policy in the class size policy for our classes over at Union Elementary School. And then also I wanted to make sure I was aware that what's included in this budget because of the decision to bring Roxbury students there we still have two buses to service Roxbury. I actually talked to the bus company just today. Um, by keeping an additional bu bus, we can be as efficient as possible between East Roxbury and the village or Northfield side of town, um, perhaps running two routes, one for East Roxbury and one for the village and Northfield side and then meeting up so one bus comes into Montpelier. Um, that would decrease bus route time. And then the late bus for Roxbury students who participate in co-curriculars or part two after school, which is the after school program held at Union Elementary School would influence the timing of the late bus so that we could accommodate to pick up the Roxbury students who attend part two for after school care. So it would, it would move that timing up. Right now it leaves at about 6.30. It would leave closer to 4.30, 4, 5 o'clock for our after school students. But that is still in the budget. Um, and then there is also about $150,000 for a potential after school program at Roxbury Village School, which is something the transition team is working on, the board's transition team is working on. So that is included in this budget. And those are our main drivers. Yep. So that's um, the after school Roxbury Village uh, program. I thought that was in the fund balance. That's in the base budget. Okay. That's in the local funds. Okay, good. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? For the positions that are being cut, the 1.5 library and then the full-time sub, was, are those vacant as well? Or do they have people in them? No, they have people in them. I know there was a lot of interest among some of the positions and some of the FTEs in Roxbury are efforts made to bring them in if possible. So all uh, the classroom teachers have all asked for transfers to union. So they're, they're all in positions and relatively the same grade level-ish. Um, for the classroom teachers, our part-time faculty, there, there are not spots for them. The, inst uh, the instructional assistant will most likely just move over to Union as well. 
because we always we always have openings in the instructional assistant world. Questions from whoever is online. Let's see if we can see them there. Doesn't look like it. Yeah. Uh, Let's give it up to questions from anyone uh, in the public. John? I was just wondering generally if you could discuss how the how the board approached the revised budget. And how did you get to where you are? How do we get to where we are? I mean uh, Changes, we looked at we looked at a variety of scenarios. I mean, obviously, the takeaway from uh, we got from the community was that the tax rate was too high. Uh, we also got a lot of input about various places where people did not want to cut and want to see cut. I think our basic approach was where we could have. Um, the least impact on our educational goals um, and the least impact on actual positions uh, while achieving kind of the maximum tax relief for taxpayers. Uh, and that was kind of, I think, what guided us. I don't know if they want to want to add to that. I think um, the administration came back after the failed vote with like possible scenarios and then the figures within them, what that translates to as far as tax increase to sort of sort of gauge where we thought the community would be willing to, to go as far as tax rate goes. Because even with some far larger cuts than what this current proposal is, the tax rates still go up some just because of the nature of how the funding is and changed. But yeah. it's how, you know, where did we feel like the community might be willing to support? Oh. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Um, I, if you'll humor me, uh, I've got a, a few, I think that we can just rattle through the questions pretty quickly. Um, we don't need to dance around the question that might be lingering here. Obviously, I'm John Guifrey. I have my citizen hat on today, not my school uh, select board hat. Uh, people in our community are not happy about this. You know that, there's no yep. surprise about that. Um, a lot of what we're unhappy with is about the information that has been put out there, advocated for, explained, um, or lack thereof. And so what I'd like to do um, is ask a couple questions here that simply just gets information out there for the public to understand with regards to the budget. Um, we feel as a community, and again, I'm speaking as a person who knows a lot of people in our community, that we're being asked to shoulder this burden. Uh, and it's a bigger picture than just the school. It's the entire town uh, without a lot of the information being out there and understood. So we all know that March 5th happened within the hair on fire uh, mode of relatively insignificant and insufficient reporting in the media about how taxes were going up 25%. I think it's important that everyone understands uh, that what they were talking about was part of their tax bill the educational part of their tax part of their tax bill, which typically, depending from town to town, is bigger than the municipal part, but it's not all of it. So that I don't think was ever explained in detail. And I can tell you this, having done this role in our community, and my job as school board chair a long time ago was to explain exactly what this meant to individuals, because we all know you can use statistics in whatever way that you want to. I can say there is 100% more Roxbury residents in here when I walked in the building, and that's only one. So when you throw out a number like 25% increase, 
and don't explain it, which is what the media does. How many people are at this meeting tonight? Two and seven or eight on the online. So that's a problem because people are voting without all the information. And so understanding how that affects things is really critical to the effectiveness of votes. And so when it went back again, now we have this again, and Roxbury then is now shouldering this burden, it's important that everyone understands what they're voting for um, and that they understand their impact. And I think the slide on page, the different house values, 15. So in a $400,000 house, uh, without any income sensitivity attached to it, their property taxes on this would have gone, it will go up $698 approximately. So that's a lot of money uh, for everyone to deal with. One thing that I don't think we know, and perhaps Christine, if you might be able to help us out, is on the March 20th meeting, we talked about two possible options, one with Roxbury and one without. And after the motion was made to bus students, this board moved on to the one with the busing as opposed to remaining, keeping RBS. Do we know what that actual dollar impact approximately would have been had we not done that? Instead of 698, I'm guessing it's 850, somewhere in that range. The one, the two budgets that we were able to look at on the 20th, we March need to 20th. do that calculation. But it is approximately one, we t we've taken out 1.5 million and RVS was 1 million of that, correct? So two thirds of the savings. Um, it wouldn't be $1,500, it might be a couple hundred dollars there. Uh, if you are able to kind of just ballpark, that would be helpful. Um, what I'm trying to get across here and ask the questions and find out and get this out into the information and to the public is this budget that's being voted on tomorrow is closing the school in our town on the cost of how much per person in Montpelier. We know what it is in Roxbury because we voted for the budget and we're fine with it. So this is being asked of our community on the backs of 150 bucks per year. I would I would jump in that it's not necessarily just a dollar to dollar amount because that option also had a lot of ramifications for personnel for transport. There would be no transportation for Roxbury or Montpelier for enrichment activities for athletics. It had a lot of other implications that I think the board responded to as well. It's not just a dollar to dollar match. Would it be safe to say, though, that it's not a five hundred dollar difference? between the two options that were looked at that day. Yeah, well, or, or if you added those things back in, you guys are under the pressure of lowering the budget, obviously, when it gets voted down on the fifth, correct? Yes. Um, without knowing exactly what that target is, you made some choices and you made some, you created some options in those two weeks and that's good. But basically taking a million dollars out of the budget, the effect of, removal of RVS. So let's say you added that back into the budget. What's that tax implication? That would be another way to look at it. With the current budget that you're putting forth tomorrow, plus 1 million, what does that add to that 698? So keeping the, the busing and the transportation and things like that, that you've added back into this one, I understand that. What does that add? Does it add $200 or does it add $500? These are really important things for people to know when they are making a decision as important as this. And so we don't know that. And I guess what I'm asking is if by the time I'm done, we might be able to get a general idea on that. Because it leads to my next question, which is, can anyone in this room explain to us how income sensitivity affects these tax bills? I'm prepared to, but I think it's better that the board or finance or superintendent does. Jake Feldman is still on, certainly can, probably better than perhaps anyone in the state. Um, Jake, are you, you able to jump you in? Me to, <clears throat> you want me to, um, yes. yeah, um, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yes. Um, 
the the income set i think the question was how does income sensitivity play in um it, it's hyper complicated um that's that's for sure um but there's a couple general um parameters that that are easy and relatively easy to understand um and that is that um, the income rate for households that have income between 47 and about $128,000 of income, um, those rates are a function of per people spending, just like the homestead property rates. And so when um, spending goes up when property tax rates go up um, income rates go up too and so probably the easiest way to summarize that piece is that um, the majority of households who get an income-based credit will experience the same um, proportional tax increase as the ones who pay on property um, households with income less than forty-seven thousand have have tax rates that are actually capped in statute. So they're not a function of per people spending. So you could make an argument that they are insulated from um, budget decisions. Um, but the other important thing to know um, is that the credits are lagged a year so that, um, you know, when you do your taxes in the spring of 2024, um, that's the credit that will get applied to the coming property tax year, but it's not sensitive to the new year of property tax rates. It's based on 2023 income and the property taxes that we're paying right now. So when things go up a lot, um, you have to wait a year to get the right credit. Um, so that's you get the right broadly- credit, not, not the credit. Correct? To get the credit, so the FY25 credit that corrects to income is not going to appear to the FY until the FY26 bill. That's the lag in the system. Um, and then a couple other details are that for households with income up to ninety thousand, um, the credit only covers up to four hundred thousand dollars of property value. Um, and for households that are between ninety thousand and the the top, which is around one twenty eight or something. Um, the credit only covers up to two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars of property value, uh, and after that, you know, you just you're not sensitized, um, basically. So um, I certainly apologize that it's so complicated, um, but that is how it works. So can I just ask you a quick clarifying question or two here, Jake? So I think sure. I understood the way you explained the the people that land between forty-seven thousand and one hundred twenty-eight thousand, and more or less, it's on a sliding scale. Uh, yes, um, it's, it's, it's on, they, they have a, an income rate that is a function of per people spending. So it's just one rate for that whole group that you just said. Um, it doesn't move. Um, but yeah, that's how it works. So the more they make towards the 128, the less they get in their prebate. Yes. Correct. Okay. And the percentage of that is capped at for the people below 47,000 is what 2.8 around there um there's two or three brackets in law um uh i don't have them in front of me um if your income is like between zero and ten thousand it's maybe half a percent between 10 and this could be way off so i'm really kind of sh I'm hesitant to even say it but 10 and 25,000 is maybe 2% and then two and a half percent for above between 25 of, and 47 of their income of their income. Yeah. And actually I said something wrong a second ago. You said they get a big, a smaller credit as their income goes up. That only, it depends on their property value. That tends to be the case. But um, if you're a low income person with also a low property value, you may get no credit of all okay. or a low or really small credit. But utilizing this uh, grid here, someone who owns a $200,000 house here makes $46,000. Uh, 
their property taxes on this grid say $2,589, but while it's impossible for any school board to calculate everyone's tax income sensitivity for their actual property bills, and as a board chair, I used to make sure I told people to go ask their accountant about that so that we weren't giving tax advice. Um, mm -hmm. However, someone in that would be, the $2,500 would be irrelevant. It would be 2.8% of their $47,000, correct? Um, which grid are you, are, is that a grid from the packet from today? Correct. Or, um, I'm just using the $200,000 estimate there um, where for Montpelier, it's saying $200,000 and it's giving the two different tax differences. Um, and they were saying the estimated FY25 property tax bill is $2,589. But if they're subject to, to that income sensitivity, that doesn't, if they're under the 47, let's call it 3% just to be generous, uh, $47,000 times 3% is $1,400. So it's almost half of that, correct? Hey, hey, John, I'm, I, I'm just going to kind of be direct here. Uh, I think there are a lot of voters in, in Montpelier and in Roxbury who have varying levels of knowledge. I also think it's a pretty, two pretty sophisticated communities. Uh, and I think a lot of people knew what they were voting for and know what they're voting for and have a pretty good understanding of, of, of the fact that the school budget and the municipal budget have different effects on property rates. Um, Montpelier rarely says no. I very, that, Jim. you don't need to explain. Very this to rarely me. says no. Well, you're, you're entitled to your opinion, and I'm entitled to mine. Well, and I'm yeah. also entitled to ask the questions here. I, you can ask some questions. You. When have you explained this before? In this detail. That's why I'm asking the question, Jim. I'm not trying. We've to be never a, in a budget. Ex, I mean, it's we've never in a budget. I have deep down. Explained. I've explained it in a budget hearing meeting before. And well, I was we a do, board chair of a much smaller community. We just, we just explained it now, and it, and right. the the idea of, of income sensitivity came up many times during the budget. But discussion. in this detail and these granular levels, no. And that's my. I, I think honestly, like ninety five percent of the people, it's going to go that are not listening at this level. Great. And if they but have those needs questions, to be on the record. And if people had those questions, they were able to come up. We had multiple meetings we, you know, there's budgets are complicated and budgets are big. The tax structure is complicated and the tax structure is big. We are, we do not have the time to give a 30 hour presentation on every last detail and, and nor is our obligation. And we definitely talked about income sensitivity. There are many houses. It, it was brought up many times, two thirds of the houses about in Montpelier have some degree of income sensitivity, including some that are shielded. As in Roxbury. As in, in fact, Roxbury. Actually a higher percentage in Montpelier than in Roxbury. Yes, no, and that that has come up and all these have come up and questions have come up. Right, but- And, and we had to make hard decisions. We've made hard decisions. And if you have some questions, we'd be happy to answer them. I understand. And, and I, I know this, yeah. And I'm but, asking the questions and I'm. this was great. I appreciate yes. Jake's feedback. Okay. I'm not sure saying you yeah. have don't have the time to answer these type of questions is a great look in this situation. I didn't say we had time. You just I mean, said you didn't have time to have a 30 hour budget meeting to answer these questions. I got five questions. I John, just get we them. had time to answer every question that came to us. We okay. didn't, we didn't, we did we do so, not in our process my go point, into a deep dive of every potential question we could ask. Right. We do not calculate the tax rate for every house in Montpelier and Roxbury, right? nor do we have a duty to do that. I and nor is that a good waste of a good use of time, nor is it something you can expect from a volunteer board. We had very hard decisions to make. We deliberated long and hard over it. I know this is very hard for the, the Roxbury community. If the budget fails, it's not going to make it any better for anyone, John. It's not going to make it any better for anyone. Sure, it could. No, it's not. Because we're going to have to cut more. It's going to be Roxbury. Perhaps you could, you could ask why people voted no. We got hundreds of emails from Montpelier residents about why they voted no. And do you know what the answer was for a lot of those? It was because we did not send all elementary students to UES. Is this UES. list complete? Page 11? Let me just get John, back to this. John, we heard from a lot of people. And this was not something the board wanted to do. I watched at this it time. All. 
And my point being with asking these questions at this particular meeting, where we have plenty of time, because when I'm done, we're done, right? So these questions don't get asked and answered at school board meetings. Not everyone has a chance to follow you guys every two weeks. The point of this meeting is that it's the one opportunity for everyone in the community to hear exactly what's on the budget and actually ask and interact with you. Because we can't do that in a school board meeting. We're here, we ask public comment, and then you guys okay. deliberate. So go, that's go the only reason questions. I'm- You've got 10 minutes. That's the only reason I'm asking the question. You've questions. got 10 minutes, John. 10 minutes to answer your questions. I, I'll be and then we're turning to someone else or closing out the meeting. I'll be quicker than that. Thank, Thank you. you, Jim. So we have income sensitivity on the table. And we have an explanation of it. The, the year lag, if I'm not mistaken, Jake, uh, because I inquired with my accountant about this, is the FY25 bill is going to be using the FY or sorry, tax year 23 income to be applied to it in the prebate that goes on your tax bill from the communities. Is that right, Jake? Uh, yep, 2023 income. That's correct. Okay, so it's 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 lagged a year sort of but it's really lagged six months because their first bill will come out what in september tax bill um the it's the first bill in montpelier comes out in august and i'm not sure the first one in roxbury um the income is from the prior calendar year True. and the the taxes used to calculate the credit are from the prior property tax year so both things are lagged and I might have done a bad job of explaining, but I was trying to say that when when things go up a lot in one year, it's not sensitive to it because of that lag. Okay. So um the and also just to be clear about this, this has no effect on anyone renting a house aside from indirectly via their landlord's taxes. Is that correct? from a tax perspective? Um, when uh, our own particular budget has no effect on um, Montpelier or Roxbury renters, um, the statewide education fund, um, th when there's pressure at a statewide level, they often change the non-residential tax rate um, to uh, raise more money. And, and so that, you know, to the extent that landlords charge their renters more money, that's that's the only flow through there. Okay. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to understand uh, is what the actual impact is for most people here. And if we're looking at $400,000 houses uh, and that number of $698 is the difference, uh, if someone made somewhere between 47 and 128, per year and you think about the lag times and that would be reduced in some capacity unknown number yes um i don't it's hard to say um i did try to make a table for Kristen over the weekend um because yep. she was asking me about these same questions and i'm happy to explain any part of it i don't know if it made it to you but um I, I tried did. to put all those combinations together. It didn't, and I don't think that it's the position, and I would agree with you, Jim, it's not the position of you guys to do everyone's taxes for them. But what I feel like is it's a topic that if you ask 90, 100 people out on the street how the income sensitivity in either of our communities affected their taxes, they probably couldn't remember what it was or even know how it was calculated. Because as Jake has explained, it's extremely complicated and it hasn't been dealt with in terms of the advocacy for a budget, which is go out and understand what this actually means to your do bottom dollar, because your vote has implications. So don't vote out of a position of, I heard it on the news, call your accountant, find out what it means to you particularly, because that's important. This is having massive effects on a group of humans and a town, and it's important that they understand what their vote is doing. And my last question, because I told you it'd be less than 10 minutes here, is, is there any word on the latest uh, proposal to allow districts to borrow higher than the 87% should the budget fail? That was talked about. Legislation in the House Ways and Means that haven't come out of committee yet. 
It was talked about two weeks ago, like in the middle of the week and a half ago. So there's draft draft uh, language and ways and means that they're looking at. And that was to, because so many budgets are failing right now, it was to allow districts to borrow at a higher rate than the 87%. Give uh, it ish. allows districts to create a budget that could be approved by the Secretary of Education and a committee of superintendents and business managers. That um, That's what the language says right now. Okay. Is again a draft in the committee. Yeah. And remember, even 100% of our budget from last year is substantially lower than the budget that we're asking voters to approve, which means substantial cuts. Understood. And last question is should this budget not pass tomorrow? There's time for one more of these before you reach that threshold. Yes. If yes. Because you have to pass this by the end of June before yes. you end up into the emergency borrowing capacity. Yes. Okay. We'd have to move very quickly. I appreciate your answers. I'm sorry that you felt like I was being contentious, Jim, but I feel really strongly about this. And this stuff was not advocated for. And the fact that first time around, we didn't have this opportunity. Now we do. That's why I came to ask these questions. And there might only be 10 people listening. But it's important that this stuff is out there on the record and discussed. Because when it's not discussed, people make decisions in isolation without all the information. And you may feel differently about it, but that's what this meeting is about. No, I, I agree with you that this was meeting about. I disagree with you that that income sensitivity was, was not discussed. It was brought up uh, multiple times. I think, if anything, there's a danger out there that people feel income sensitivity gives them more protection than it does. I think some people under the impression that income sensitivity means that their taxes don't raise, um, which is not true. They just raise at, at, a light, at a slower level. I think just unfortunately, we're in a, you know, we are not the only people, you know, you say, you know, even for people who are paying full, it's, you know, what, 690 some dollars a year. You're talking about people who are struggling with groceries, struggling with daycare costs. People are getting squeezed. Uh, again, it's an unfortunate situation we're in, but, um, you know, the, the message we got from voters was that they do not feel they can afford what we ask them to afford. Um, and I can't look at a lot of people out there and and tell them that there's not something to that. You and I would disagree on that. Um, well, we asked we asked them and, and they gave an answer. Sure. Thanks, John. Thank you. Ask if anybody else has any more questions. Anyone else have any more questions online? I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. Sorry, I'm at the I'm at the library, so I'm getting echo effect. This is Kristen Gettler from the board. Um, yeah. Now that the income sensitivity in the income sensitivity credit piece has been a question that's been being asked in Roxbury, and so I think. I just want to make it clear for all of us. I think what I hear you saying, Jake, is that there's no simple way or place that one could plug in their information um, in terms of their income, in terms of their household value, and necessarily understand with the budget that we're looking at what their income credit could be. Like that kind of apparatus or online you know, calculator does, does not exist currently. Is that accurate? I don't know if Jake's still here. You're muted, Jake. Yeah. It, it does. There is an online calculator, um, and uh, yeah, yep, it's on the tax department. Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yep, yeah, we got you now. Yep. Um, there's, there's an online calculator on the tax department website. Um, I can send you a link. Okay. Um, and um, I'd, I'll send you some other details um, um, to, to try to 
what their tax bill might be. But all that being said, um, you know, the it's everything is still being legislated right now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mentioned that there's this like 15% credit boost, but that was a house idea. And I don't know if the Senate is going to go along with that. Um, I don't know if the legislature is going to pump a lot of one-time money into the education fund to try to lower taxes in an election year. I don't know what the yield is going to be next year. So, so this is not any of our faults here. Um, there's just a lot of balls up in the air. So Kristen, I'll send you like the best stuff that I can, but you know, you should sure. know that it's all um, preliminary. Yeah. Yeah. I know that's always a challenge of so much is still at work at the state level. So it still makes even at this point when trying to, you know, push when we're pushing a budget, a budget forward, there's still a number of pretty critical unknowns. Um, but I would be happy to share that calculator with folks because I know it's been a question that's been circulating um, around the community here. And um, I also hear you saying that it's kind of a it's kind of a quagmire and it, it's very difficult to understand so I don't, is any of the sort of like future, you know, thinking about how we're shifting, um, you know, education financing to be a more understandable, um, you know, by, by the lay person is, is like that piece being factored in it all and, and making that more accessible and to the lay person in the future. And it might be like, they're just not there yet in that conversation. Um, in, in, terms in the of yield the, bill, Kristen, uh, yeah. in the yield bill, the it, there's inclusive of a fact finding kind of committee to to look at the funding formula and also look right. at what changes could be possible. So that that was in the yield bill that went went through the house. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Hello? Yes, uh, it looks like Travis Montpelier, do you have a question? I've, I've worked, my name is Travis and I, with Montpelier School District, I worked for the, I've worked for the, the previous school district, neighboring school district, and I've already voted for the budget, and I had it unfortunately, I won't say right now, is all the cuts in the budget as best we can go? I would say, Travis, that should the budget be defeated uh, tomorrow, then the board will be looking at multiple avenues that they have available to them, including using more of the fund balance, as well as looking at some additional uh, decreases in the budget that the community did not want the first time around and made that pretty clear. However, um, the board also doesn't want to use the whole fund balance up. So I think that will be a really, really difficult conversation that I hope you can participate in when we when we do have it. I do agree with that. Yeah. I've seen where I've seen where waste of money has come in the school systems. We try very hard not to waste anybody's money. Yeah, no, the, the budget we put forward, yeah, as, as I kind of said earlier, was trying to maintain our educational excellence and educational programming, keep that as whole as possible. Um, and I think going much deeper would start to compromise our ability to do that. Any other questions or? No, well, um, thank you, everybody. Uh, please do vote if you have not voted already. Um, polls are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, and I think both Montpelier and Roxbury as well, right? Um, Kristen Arrett is the polling. Roxbury's 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. Yep. So it was a little later in, in Roxbury um, at uh, Town Hall and City Hall. 
Um, and if you have any questions between now and then you can always email the school board at school board at mpsvt.org. And, and we're happy to answer any questions you might have before, um, 7 PM tomorrow or otherwise, but, um, if budget related before 7 PM. So, uh, please do vote everyone. It's very important that you do. Uh, and, um, we have another meeting Wednesday, so we will, uh, know the result by then. And a uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thanks, all.